Okay, so welcome everybody who was in our last video and for some reason welcome anybody who landed on this video first. This is the second part of our looking at the stats video at the beginning of the month. We're going to do these at the beginning of every month. Today we are focusing on the lower mainland. In the future videos we're going to be touching on Toronto and Alberta and out east if we can get that information where we've got feelers out in the Toronto area so most likely next month we're going to be getting into Toronto as well so in this video we're going to start off with the apartment segment thanks Daniel uh, so when we're taking a look at apartments uh, on, on the left, we've got our inventory for uh, for Metro Vancouver, and on the right, we have where the sales were. Uh, so for, for apartments, uh, the uh, really the majority of the majority of the inventory is in that 400 500k range right now, but very closely followed by the 5 to 600k range. Uh, when we're looking at sales, though, uh, the sales are strongest in that 4 to 500k range, and they drop off sharply. Uh, so we're, we're looking at 276 sales versus uh, around 200 sales for the for the next highest uh, price bracket. Um, as we get up to that million dollar mark, uh, the sales really fall off compared to the inventory. Uh, so you're looking at maybe about seven, eight months of inventory. So it's it's going from a balanced market into a uh, into a buyer's market very quickly, and and we are seeing that again that downward price pressure from the from the luxury top uh, from the luxury pushing down into the bottom. So that you know for the sellers that want to sell their unit, they they might have to lower their price to uh, to pick up uh, a sale from somebody who's able to complete that transaction. Yeah, you can really, um, really see where people are pushed into uh, mm -hmm. the price bracket they're pushed into. I tell insights has been nice enough. Thank you, Dane, to uh, send us some of their technical charts for condos. So I, I just want to talk about this quickly. I'm not a not a technical chart expert, but uh, I, I gleaned some insights from his video uh, over on the ITEL insights channel. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the, uh, the the median pricing for condos. Uh, so we we saw that meteoric rise up until uh, you know 2017, and then we saw the decline, and now we're seeing it kind of funnel together. So when you see that that uh, narrowing of the uh, of the spread, usually what that means is something's either about to take off or it's about to to crash a bit. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in coming months with that rate cut, with uh, with the uh, <coughs> and uh, everything else that's uh, everything else that's happening right now. Uh, well, there's the, the 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 insurance thing that's going to directly impact mm -hmm. this market too. So there's kind of competing yes. forces. Um, yeah, and and the 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 that that one might be um, inflationary because it will constrict inventory if people are delisting because their building can't get insurance less inventory maybe that will drive prices up yeah it, it could drive prices up i think that if that if it does drive prices up that'll be a, a short-term uh pain for buyers mm -hmm. uh like some something will step in whether it's government a company legislation, uh, something will step in to fix that condo insurance uh, debacle eventually. Uh, maybe it's even going to be mass foreclosures. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, something will happen there. Uh, so, yeah, it's it, it, and we're right in that breaking point right now. Um, if we look at the sales chart, uh, we can see that sales are trending down at a pretty rapid rate. Um, so the uh, again uh, up until 2016 we had that huge increase. Uh, then and, and until 2017, uh, uh, again that seasonality drove it up and down again. And now now we're we're getting into that tighter packing of uh, of seasonality where uh, there there tends to be not not as large of a spread between uh, winter and summer months for how many uh, how, how many units are actually selling in the condominium market. <laughs> Uh, and then, so our, our days on market, now this is an interesting one. Uh, days on market, when we're talking about this, this is only uh, looking at units that's sold. So when you look at uh, at how the pricing is going and uh, when, when you're taking a look at the, 
the, the transactions that are occurring. This really is a reflection of units that are being priced sharply and people are coming in and scooping them up before uh, before anyone else gets a chance to bid on them. So you might have something that's uh, priced at 450k, but really it's worth maybe 500k. And so you get a bunch of offers on it. Uh, you might have someone who's trying to get in. Uh, they get three lowball offers and one guy comes in and bids you know, 10k over or something to that effect. Uh, but so so what we're seeing here is the the days on market are, are just for those sold properties. Uh, so I've been noticing it. Maybe other people have been noticing it too. But uh, condominiums are being the apartments are being uh, priced a little bit sharper lately, uh, and as a result, they're moving quicker. Uh, this doesn't reflect the inventory that's been sitting on the market for an extended period of time at higher prices. So uh, and does this take into account uh relisting because i've noticed that's a new thing that uh more and more agents are relisting they get a new mls number on the same property make it look brand new mm -hmm. take it to the part the top of the um realtor.ca uh inventory basically right so this takes into account relisting if the listing uh, wasn't with a new agent uh, and wasn't more than 90 days old. So as soon as your listing's 90 days old, it's wiped. It's like a bad debt, it just goes away. Oh, uh, okay. it's, not, it's not reflected in the stats anymore. So that would be interesting to actually have because uh, the, the relisting is, is, a, is a funny thing because um, sometimes they're relisting like within like a month, it seems just to get a new MLS number on it. Yeah, or, or the next day. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. uh yeah, it's really a it's really really a it's kind of sneaky. <laughs> kind of sneaky. It's very kind sneaky. Of sneaky. <laughs> it is so. like purposefully sneaky. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, you you might ground your kid if they did that, but uh so yeah, so that's uh that's what's happening right now. But e even though these units are being priced sharply, uh, the days of days on market are still climbing. Uh, so it's not a it's not a uh, it's not something where the the overall average is moving down. Uh, this month it moved down quite a bit because there's been a lot listed that's sold quite quickly. Uh, but I think that what we're going to see is as this newer inventory that was able to be priced sharply goes away. Uh, we're going to see this days on the market uh, climb again, which puts downwards price pressure on the uh, on the units, of course. Um, and then th this is an inventory chart. And by the way, this these charts are for the uh, Greater Vancouver region. So we're talking everything above the Fraser River right up to Whistler, for example, uh, and nothing below Fraser. So for this particular group of charts, uh, Surrey, Langley, those are excluded. Um, so if we're looking at Greater Vancouver, uh, again, we, we can see that uh, that rise of inventory and then a sharp drop off towards uh, 2016, 2017. But now we're seeing it build again. Um, so in terms of the, the inventory that's sitting there right now, uh, it's, you know, it's relatively low at the moment. Uh, but again, seasonality comes into play here. Uh, when you're looking at the, the recent history on this chart, you have to keep in mind that last year was a terrible year for sales. Uh, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, those 9,000 units that are sitting out there, as well as all of the uh, pre-sale condo buildings that are about to complete this year. So there, there's quite a bit of room for this to move up in very short order. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the uh, condo overview. Uh, I think that the more that we watch this, uh, the clearer it'll get. Uh, how that strata insurance issue is going to play out, uh, how pre-sales completing will play out. Uh, I think the inventory is going to grow this year and the pricing, you know, kind of this, especially towards uh, towards September, October, it's we're, we're going to see that continue to decline even if there's a short term spike. Is there is there a seasonality to completions? Like, are they trying to complete at a certain time of the year? Because last year they were, they were talking about uh, all the buildings and it was a ton of buildings that were set to complete this year and next year. 
the the seasonality uh I'm, I'm not sure that there's so much seasonality anymore i think the the problem now is getting tradespeople to actually come in and finish the building uh, and perhaps deficiencies that are uh, that are occurring as a result of of uh, not having access to uh, a broad pool of tradespeople. Mm-hmm. So you, you may have you may have to go and redo flashing on the building because your your glazers uh, weren't really glazers. Maybe they were uh, carpenters that said they were glazers, right? So right, right, right. And and then. Your condo insurance goes up. It's just a big snowball. <laughs> ah, there we go. We tied it all in. <laughs> <laughs> um, townhouses. Uh, the short story with townhouses is there's there's not a lot of inventory there. Um, there's not a lot of townhouses though, right? Townhouses are it's pretty rare. Uh, there, there's a lot of complexes. You can see them everywhere, but uh, the density is really low for a townhouse. Um, so you know, the the the, the uh, Right across the board, uh, they're they're in demand. Uh, they're being priced right though. Like we don't, you don't see a townhouse for sale for five million dollars. Uh, so because of that, you know they're moving. Uh, the interesting thing to keep in mind here is that uh, a person can get a condo in downtown Vancouver for you know four five hundred five five hundred thousand six hundred thousand maybe, uh, or you can just move a little bit out of town. You can get yourself a townhouse and not have anybody above you. Mm-hmm. That's what got me when you when you were telling me about that. Uh, I would much rather have a townhome for around the same price. Uh, maybe get your own garage. You have your own front door. You only have neighbors on the side. If you got an end unit, mm-hmm. it's only on one side of you. So, but there there is a lot to being you know another twenty thirty minutes outside of where you want to be maybe. Maybe yes, that's... exactly, exactly. Uh, have, having to have that garage because you have no access to transit is, uh, you know, it's a lifestyle, right, 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 lifestyle right. Choice it's a trade point, off. So. And I guess uh, for developers, if they can build a condo, they're they're going to they're going to squeeze a lot more out of a condo building than they are a townhome complex. That's right. That's right. Right. So sometimes the townhomes required to build the larger towers, though. Right. So that could be a requirement of your development. Um, right. Right. And sometimes yeah. they're bu- right. So sometimes they're building townhomes because that's what the zoning is or the regulations are. Right. Um, so you know, the, an interesting thing about the townhomes, if we're talking about people who might have to sell, uh, there's an example of. Uh, Someone who, you know, they, they bought their uh, townhome two years ago uh, at an inflated price and, you know, probably stretched themselves very thin in terms of what they were able to afford. Uh, looked through the strata documents like we were talking about the other day and uh, didn't find any mention of, uh, of any type of major repairs needed. Uh, after they moved in, year and a half after they moved in, uh, they found out that the complex needed two million dollars worth of repairs uh, and that that was going to be spread out across just about 90 units for a cost of twenty eight thousand dollars each uh, and like who, who can come up with that especially when you put down five percent and now you're underwater you, you, you just no uh, no that's, no that's this I, is what happens right i always mention that when you're getting into a strata you lose that control like if your window is leaking in your house you can decide when to repair that when mm-hmm. it's a strata, they just say, you know, you're going to you're going to pay for it. And it can the, yeah. and the the price can be quite high. I mean, twenty eight thousand dollars when you uh, start reading the stories of how many people are two hundred dollars away from bankruptcy or insolvency. That starts to yeah. raise the red flags because uh, uh, yeah. people have just gone all in on real estate. They've put everything into their down payment. They have no contingency fund. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. And the, uh, so, and, and then, you know, the, the second part to that story is they, they voted down that needed repair. So they're not doing the full repair. They're only doing half of it. Uh, right. It's a leaky condo situation, right? So, so they're uh, just so kicking they're only the doing can. Half of it. Yeah. Just kicking the can. Uh, and you know, most of them still can't afford the, the minimal repair. Uh, so, you know, what, what happens shortly is 
the condo corp looks for their money they don't get it uh, condo corp actually beats out the first on mortgage so if you, if you live in a condo and your condo the condo corp forecloses on your unit uh, the condo corp gets paid before your bank mm. um, so you know it's it's uh it's it's just a nasty situation that that uh it's happening quite often but in this case uh they've actually gone out and uh thrown up a GoFundMe to try and raise money so that they can uh so so they don't lose their home right right and this kind of touches on how the the debt has been kind of spread throughout families so mm -hmm. hi, maybe these people they borrowed money from family to pay the down payment and now they're probably looking to family to help them keep the unit so there's and maybe that family is you know borrowing money against their house so the debt kind of gets spread out is getting spread wider and wider and if you look yeah. at the the amount of debt that canadians have it's very high yeah it's very high and in fact uh I think the there there's some statistics put out uh, just the other day. Uh, HELOC spending is pretty much flatlined now, so people are starting to clue in that they need to tighten up their purse strings a bit. Yeah, well, clue in, or maybe they've reached the end. You know, there's saturation. Yeah. You can only take on so much debt, it, it, mm -hmm. and as a country, we can only take on so much debt, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that gives me the chills. <laughs> yeah, like, it gives me the chills. People, if you're buying a place, have a contingency fund, like at least like a couple months in the bank of mortgage payments and living expenses, just in case well, you have say, a hiccup. Yeah. Like yeah, I would have like a least. year. I would have like a mm -hmm. year just in case. What do you? What if you lose your job? What if your condo goes leaky and you've got a twenty? Eight thousand bill, or now it's seventeen, and they're gonna have to pay the rest of it later when they fix it, fix the building later. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What What if you get hit by a car and you can't work anymore? There's a lot of you know, like, sure, the insurance yeah. is gonna pay you, but it's not. Uh, well, it's not hopefully, the same standard yeah. of life. They're yeah. playing. They're you, playing you with the so. insurance now too, right? The no fault yeah. insurance stuff. So yeah, that's, um, uh, yeah. Uh, and what I was saying before <laughs> is, what I think should be a mortgage. A requirement of a mortgage is a contingency fund because the, mm. the when you're applying for a mortgage they'll let you put everything into your down payment you can go That's all right. in all in yeah. nothing in your bank account they just they just do the math and say okay if you keep working you can pay that pay that mortgage but I kind of think you should have a contingency fund on top of that mm-hmm the uh, there there are some banks that will actually let you uh, use your funds that you might be using as a contingency fund uh, as um, as part of your mortgage qualification. So if you mm -hmm. have that money, they'll let you borrow more. So right. that if you do fail, they can take your money. <laughs> right. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, I think that's going to have to be a legislated thing. Yeah. Um, Okay, so on to detached. <laughs> uh, detached, it's it makes up most of that uh, most of that amount over over two million. Uh, so you don't really see many condos playing in this space. Uh, so this, this is mostly homes. The uh, th there is a large amount of homes under a million dollars for sale uh, that that are sitting there, uh, and also um, j just over a million. So that's that really the the big play there is. Uh, 200k over under a million dollars. That's where most of the inventory is sitting. Um, we can see a lot of the inventory sitting out uh, over two million dollars, and then so th those luxury homes really, right? They're they're sitting out there for quite some time. Um, if we take a look at the age of the homes, so I wanted to take a look at the age of homes for detached specifically, just because there's more homes that are a year old than there are from this year. So. Uh, that, that's telling me that uh, maybe uh, detached construction has dropped off a little bit. There isn't as much appetite to build detached homes in the last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, but again, if you if you take a look at that, uh, going back out to two, three years, there's a lot of inventory for new homes. 
uh, sitting on the market. Uh, those could be homes that were, somebody tried to buy and flip, or they, they, a lot of the time they're homes that uh, developers just haven't sold. Uh, there's the developers are actually starting to rent out houses that haven't sold yet to avoid the empty homes tax. Right, 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 right. Um, if we look at the sales, uh, again, sales under a million bucks, still very strong. Uh, but then uh, over a million, it starts petering off again. Uh, I think that we're looking at, uh, so if, again, if you look at this, you can see very clearly where the demand stops. Um, so that, that demand stops probably right around uh, 1.8, around there. Uh, and then we're seeing again that we're going to have that pressure pushing the luxury market closer and closer to the low end homes and then pushing the low end home prices down as well. Mm -hmm. And that's going to, unfortunately for a lot of people, that's going to take time that to work its mm -hmm. way through the system. People can hold off and hold on and hold on to their dreams of capturing that price that they saw a year ago, but it's going to work its way through. It's just going to take time to do that. That's just it. Everything takes time. <laughs> yeah. Especially in real estate, especially yeah. it just takes a long, long time for things to work, work their ways through. So I mean, those are, those are the statistics. Uh, that's what's happening in greater Vancouver for the month of February, 2020. Um, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, just give us a thumbs up down below, hit subscribe, uh, smash the bell, make sure you're updated every Saturday when the episode comes out. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's what we have for this week on Saturday. Any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Uh, we, uh, we spent a lot of time troubleshooting on this one. <laughs> Next month is going to be a bit smoother. The month after that will be even smoother. Great. And uh, yeah, this has been Not an Agent.